Number 20. Calculate the maximum height to which water could be squirted with the hose in example 12.2 if it, letter A, emerges from the nozzle. All right, so uh, here's a little picture. The nozzle's up here. It has a radius of 0.25 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. This is coming right from the problem that I've copied over here. And the hose has a radius of 0.9 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. Just here it is. I'm just doing those conversions, centimeters to meters. It also tells us that the volume flow rate through the hose is going to be with the nozzle attached. Okay. Um, it says that it is 0.5 liters per second. Now, the only thing is I got to convert this right to cubic meters uh, per second. So why don't we do that? I'll do that at the top. So 0.5 liters per second. Remember that there are 1,000 liters for every one cubic meter. So the liters will cancel, and obviously we got to divide this thing by 1,000. Or, in other words, you could just take the 0.5. I know I'm, I know there's three sig figs there, but I was just saving space. This is going to be times 10 to the minus 3, and that's now in terms of cubic meters per second. All right. So you could also just find the decimal value or reconvert this into, you know, if you wanted to just move the decimal one place, uh, to the right there, you can, and then you just change your value of the exponent. It doesn't matter to me. Um, so in order to do this, right, uh, we want to know how high the water, if it emerges with the nozzle on, we want to know how high the water will reach. So you know that there is going to be some velocity that the water is exiting. We'll call this VI. Some velocity of the water uh, that it's exiting this hose with, right? There's some velocity to that water. Well, how do we find it? Well, remember that the uh, volume flow rate is constant throughout this whole tube, right? The volume flow rate is 0.5 liters in the hose section, and it will also be 0.5 liters through this nozzle. And that being the case, I realize that I can use this formula, make a statement, right, that says, uh, so this is for letter A, make a statement that says that Q, uh, we'll call it through the hose, will equal, let me make that a little clearer, the volume flow rate through the holes will equal the volume flow rate through the, um, I just forgot, <laughs> nozzle. There you go. And um, what we now can do is, again, find the uh, velocity. Okay. Oh, also, so this is also then equal to, I can make another equation here. I can also then say that this is equal to the area of the nozzle multiplied by the velocity through that nozzle. Okay. So we know... We know the Q through the hose. That's also the Q through the nozzle. And now I'm going to take this equation and run with it. All right, I want to solve for the velocity. Therefore, I have to divide out the area from both sides. So the velocity through the nozzle will equal the volume flow rate through the nozzle divided by the area of the nozzle. The nozzle will be circular. They tell us the radius. So now I can just substitute on in the equation for a circular cross section, right? So this is Qn divided now by pi rn squared, meaning the radius of the nozzle. Now I can plug everything in, right? Or actually, you know what? Let me uh, let me leave this alone. So this is the radius, excuse me, this is the volume coming out of the nozzle. And we'll, we said that this, I'm going to reframe it as the initial velocity, okay? So again, it's the volume flow rate divided by pi multiplied by the radius of the nozzle squared. Now just keep this in mind, okay? We know the initial velocity. We know it. We know Q. We know R. We can solve it. If you want to solve it for a number, by all means, do so. Uh, but I'm going to leave this in terms of the variables. Now, here, we, the water is leaving the tube, with the, the nozzle, that is, with some velocity. We want to then calculate how high this is going to reach, right? So the water is going to shoot up. Eventually, it's going to reach some highest point. Let me just show this in black. Eventually, it's going to reach some highest point. And it's going to come to a stop. Oh, my goodness. Is this kinematics? Yes, it is. Right? Our old friend kinematics is back. So what we have to do now is we have to think kinematically. So we realize that at the top of the uh, trajectory of the water, the velocity is zero. So you know after the water reaches some high point up here, it's going to be Vf is equal to zero. The water is in free fall, correct? So do you know the acceleration? Well, you're thinking, well, the acceleration, this is happening in the pure y direction. Oh, that's just gravity, right? Yes, negative 9.8. How do we now take these variables related to then the height, aka y? You can call it d, you can call it whatever, but labeling it y. You have to remember the formula, all right? Remember the formula of vf squared is equal to vi squared 
plus 2a. I'm going to do y in this case because I'm talking about all y components here. Right? Now, what do you have to solve for? Solve for y. So what do you have to do here? Well, remember that the final velocity is going to be 0. So I'm just going to simplify this, get rid of that. Okay. So solving this whole thing for y, you got to subtract the vi y on over and then divide everything by 2ay. When you do that, you're going to get y now is equal to negative viy squared, because I had to subtract this on over. And then I'm left with this equaling the negative of that, right? And then I just got to divide out my 2ay. So divided now by 2a sub y. Okay, great. Well, what's the... So here is an equation, right? Now you might say, well, negative, is that going to be taken care of by the square? No, that's not going to be taken uh, care of by the square because this is not in parentheses, all right? Remember the acceleration due to gravity is negative, so the double negative should cancel and we would be left with then a positive height, which we would expect. I'm taking my reference point here to be this is zero height, okay? Um, by the way, in case I went too fast, this is zero height, all right? Um, so now what I can do is realize that here is my initial velocity. Here is my initial velocity, right? And I can just substitute now. So writing it on out, we're now going to get uh, that we have negative parentheses Q sub N all divided by pi R sub N squared. And that's whole thing is squared, right? Then divide that by now two times the acceleration in the Y direction. So now when we plug everything in, this is the overall formula, right? But now when we plug everything in, it's going to be now uh, 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3. That's what I found up here, right? And then divide that now by pi times then the radius of the nozzle, which was 0 0.25 times 10 to the minus 2. That's squared. And then this whole thing squared. Oh, my bejesus. 2 times then negative 9.8, right, all on the bottom here. Notice that the, the negatives will cancel. I'm not even going to plug it into the calculator, all right? So let's do this one piece at a time. So let's do the numerator first. So this is 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, divided then by parenthesis pi times 0.25 times 10 to the minus 2. Square that. Get an answer. And then, oops, I squared the wrong thing. Sorry, guys, one more time. 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3. This is then divided by now parenthesis uh, pi times 0.25 times 10 to the minus 2. That's squared. Close those parentheses. And then square that. I got a, a value of about 25 for that numerator. Then square that numerator. So the overall numerator here. Uh, let me just pick up the pen right here. The overall numerator is about 648. And then divide that now by 2 times 9.8. And we get about 33.1, right? So this is going to be about, so let me write it down here. This is now going to be about y will equal 33.1 uh, and meters, right? This is going to be meters. So this is how high the water will go. Okay, so this is great. Is there another way you could have done it though, right? Um, yeah, there is. What was another way you might have been able to approach this problem? So let's just take this answer, okay? So I'm gonna bring it on up there. I'm gonna have to erase all this beautiful work here. All right, guys? So just a heads up. Pause the video if you wanna copy it down. All right, so now, doo -doo -doo. What's another way we could have done it? Well, we could use our could use our boy over here, Bernoulli, right? We could use his equation. All right. Now um, there's two states to this, right? We're talking about the pressure of one and the pressure of another state uh, or location. So in terms of my picture here, this is going to be my first location, right, where the uh, water leaves the nozzle, and then up at the highest point will be the second state. Okay, so let me just leave that in. Here's state one, and up here will be state two. So let's write his equation out. The absolute pressure at point one plus then one half multiplied by the density of the fluid multiplied then by the velocity of that fluid at point one squared plus then the density of the fluid multiplied by gravity multiplied by the height of that fluid at point one should be equal to now the absolute pressure at point two plus then one half multiplied by the density of that fluid 
multiplied by the velocity of that fluid at 0.2 squared, plus then the density of the fluid multiplied by gravity multiplied by the height of that fluid at 0.2. All right. So, <laughs> the other way I think is easier, but uh, and you can do it this way. So, first, what's the pressure at 0.1? Well, the pressure, the absolute pressure, right, is going to be basically the atmospheric pressure, the pressure surrounding the water here. So this is atmospheric pressure. How about the pressure surrounding it up at point two? Well, that's also atmospheric pressure. You might say, well, there is some height differential, so shouldn't the pressures be different? Yes, of course, but they're going to be minuscule, right? The difference is minuscule, so they cancel. Um, the velocity at point one, right? We can figure that out. Actually, wait a minute. That's what we're, no, that's not what we're asked to do. We can uh, figure out that velocity, all right, similarly to how we've done it before. Uh, by the way, what's the fluid we're talking about? Well, we're talking about water, right? So this is the, that's the density of water. So this is, all of this is the density of water. Um, uh, what's the height, the initial height? Well, remember, if I choose this as my starting point, the height is zero. So this whole thing cancels. How about then at the top? What's the velocity of point two up here? What's the velocity up there? Oh, it's nothing. Goodbye. And then there is some height, so that we have to leave alone. So now why don't we, as you can see, we can simplify this now, right? So this is going to be one half density of the water times then the velocity uh, sub one squared. That's going to now equal the density of the fluid, the water, multiplied by gravity, multiplied by now the height, oops, the height of two. Doesn't this look strikingly similar to kinetic energy and potential energy? Hmm. Doesn't this look like maybe we could solve it that way, given the kinetic energy and the potential energy? Hmm. Interesting, right? Um, so if you notice, the, de the densities will cancel. This is now going to be 1 half V1 squared is equal to G times H2. And now I'm going to solve this for H2. All right. So H2 now will be equal to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to just rework this slightly. It's going to be V1 squared over 2G. Okay. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. This equation? Wait, what did we have before? Did I have before that the equation was this, that y was equal to negative v1 or vi squared all over 2a? Oh my good, are these the same? And then you're going to say, well, no, this has a negative in it. But wait a minute, this has a in it. A, remember, if you plug in A here, which you should and you must, this is the negative 9.8, okay? G, on the other hand, is the absolute value, right? It's just positive 9.8. So hence, you're still going to get the same answer. Look, it's identical. Isn't that fascinating? I'm sure you're standing there talking to the computer screen yourself. This is fascinating, Andrew. I can't believe this. I never loved physics so much. Anyway. So here we have now that the equations are the same. So look, it doesn't matter how you approach it. You can approach it in two different ways, all right? The more ways you know how to approach a problem, the more successful of a problem solver you'll be, all right? Because maybe one way on a, maybe you'll get a question, one way it looks apparent, the other way it doesn't. But you should know both so that in case you get a question you don't understand on the test, you have two possible ways to get to it, right? Pretend, it's almost like, you know, you, gotta, you, gotta, you have a location you got to get to, but you got two roads to get there. If you know how to take both roads to get to that location, it's good in case one road has a roadblock. You can still get there, right? Same idea here. Anyway, getting rid of this now, I now uh, have to still solve for the velocity, right, in order to find my height. Now, that is the exact same process as before. That I'm not going to go through because we already did it, right? Basically, it was Q of the nozzle is equal to A of the nozzle multiplied by V of the nozzle. Solve this for V of the nozzle. You got to expand on the A. Then you go plug this mumbo jumbo on in and whatever it's literally identical okay we just we have just done that so as you can see there's two ways to solve the problem all right now let's erase all this because i'm going to need more space so that was the answer for letter a and now letter b uh what's the height if it emerges with the nozzle removed assuming the same flow rate that's an important assumption because quite honestly if this if this nozzle is removed, the flow rate actually should go up. Why? Because you removed some resistance now. It's very hard to push water through a tube, right? I mean, have you ever have you ever put your thumb over a hose, right, to like increase the pressure over the opening, right, and so that you can increase the velocity there of the water coming out so you can, you know, squirt your friend? I don't know, right? I'm sure you've done that. 
it does the same volume of water exit that hose now with your thumb over it as when your thumb wasn't on it? No, right? So the equation of continuity, you know, you got to be careful when you can apply it and when you can't. Now, they're assuming, they're telling us to assume that when we remove this nozzle now, that the volume flow rate has stayed the same. Obviously, it won't, but that's the assumption here. So how do you want to do this one now? Well, we can do it the same way, right? I'm not going to derive all the equations. You can do it either way, but we're going to have this, we're going to have this equation overall again. It, it, it shouldn't change, okay? We're going to have that the height obtained will now be equal to, and I'm just trying to recall this from memory, so hopefully I don't forget. Um, so this was negative. It was Q uh, through the hose this time now, right? That's the only thing that's going to change. Um, and also that it's divided by the radius, um, right? Well, the area, right? And the radius now is for the hose squared. And this whole thing was squared. Then divided by 2 now multiplied by A. Okay? This should be the formula. We just derived it both ways. Okay? So now Y will equal negative. Uh, the volume flow rate stayed the same. So that's 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 all divided by then pi, multiplied by the radius now of the hose. So this is going to be 0 0.9 times 10 to the minus 2. Right? Notice the consistency here, right? That's why you, you always want to write your subscripts. If we're talking about the flow rate through the hose, then we're talking about the radius of the hose, all right? Because we're talking about the velocity of the hose here, remember? All right? So just that's an important principle. So this whole thing is squared, then divided by 2 multiplied by a, which is negative 9.8, and voila, plug it on into the calculator. I'm not even going to plug in the negative, right? Because we know that they're going to cancel. So this is 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 divided them by pi multiplied by 0 0.9 now times 10 to the minus 2 squared. Just get that answer. I got 1.96 or so. Square that now. And then the whole numerator value, including the square, is 3.86. And then divide it now by parenthesis 2 times 9.8. And here we go. We get a value of about... Um, 0 0.197 or so. 197. I don't know what that 9 really looks like, but that's 197. And this is now meters. All right. So here is now the height if the nozzle were off and we assume the same flow rate. And that kind of should make sense, right? If you got the nozzle over it, right, and you're shooting this hose on up, it's going to obtain a pretty high height relative to if you take the nozzle off and you just let the water kind of droop out of it. Right? I mean, it's not drooping. There's still a lot. There's still flow, uh, but it it just doesn't have the same uh, velocity to it. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it very much. I really do hope this helped. Uh, please help us out if you can. Subscribe. That'd be awesome. Tell your friends too. Uh, we really do hope that this channel is helping you out tremendously. We are getting some positive feedback. Not R, but we have been. And uh, it's very nice to hear. So thank you guys very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.